you get everything written down? Because it's time to make some pivot charts. Let's do this. Now in this visualization, we are making two pivot charts. We need to start by making pivot tables, but we'll be turning in the two pivot charts. Now you'll notice in the formatting below, it's very important to see that you need to put your name on this. You're gonna have to put prepared by and then your name. That'll go in the chart title. Additionally, we need to make sure we include axis tiles on this, a Y vertical title and an X horizontal title for the axis titles. Additionally, do not include the pivot table. You will include a data table. So although we have to start by making a pivot table, you will actually include the data table. So don't take a picture of your pivot table. You want to imagine this is going to be in the local newspaper. It's got to be good. It's we got to make sure we have a great graphic and it's going to look excellent in the paper. Last but not least, we need to format our decimals. Imagine telling someone your GPA is 3.7467. You're like, no, 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 no. Your GPA is a 3.7. So it's very important here that we have some great graphics and we follow the instructions and we also give a write up. So you have here the instructions for each one of the pivot charts that you'll be creating and a write up. Now, here's a huge disclaimer huge disclaimer. I am using different data and I'm doing my own example for one of these. So I'm using different data and my own examples. This is data you will not be using. The data that you will be using right here is the following. So go ahead and download this data and use this to create the first one via the instructions here and then the second one right here. One thing I want to point out is there is rules to the second one for choosing your own. You will need to make sure that in your columns and your rows, you have one categorical variable in the value field. You put a quantitative variable and you choose the average of this. Be very careful when doing this to make sure you make the right graphic. If it looks a little bit crazy, you might have something that isn't meeting these standards. So Brian is once again, using different data and he's going to make his own pivot chart. Let's take a look at this right here. So once again, remember that I am using completely different data. So you're going to see a all new pivot chart that is going to be just data that I'm using, but I'm going to do the analysis and create it to help you out with the two you need to make. Follow the instruction for your two pivot charts to turn in the assignment that meets your guidelines. So here we are. Let's go ahead and hit either control A on a PC or command A on a Mac. You should see all of the data gets selected. With all of the data selected, we're going to go to insert, and then we're going to go to pivot table. As we said, you have to make a pivot table to make a pivot chart. Once we click this, we'll go over to this screen right here. We already have our data selected, so we can click OK. Nothing else needs to be clicked. Now that we're right here, we're going to move slightly out of the way, and we can start to make our pivot table. The first thing we have to do, if you remember back from the instructions, is choose the variable we want to display. Now, pivot chart one has a specific variable to display for your assignment. Pivot chart two tells you to pick a quantitative variable. So you know what? I'll pick a quantitative variable for my pivot chart, kind of like I'm doing a pivot chart two right here. I am going to choose, let's go with people's GPAs. I'm going to take that and put this right here to values. Now, this is the value I am displaying, and you'll notice First thing we see is we have the sum of everybody's GPAs. So we've chosen something we want to display, but now we're on to step two. How do we want to display this value? Well, one, maybe I want my decimals formatted a certain way. Let's just double check the decimal formatting by clicking right here on this one value. And let's go here to home. And then we have the add or remove decimals button. If you go here, you'll remove decimals. If you go here, you'll add decimals. I'm actually okay with it being two decimals. I'm just gonna leave it as is, but I've kind of checked the decimal formatting. You can do this later, but it's much easier to do on this step where you just have one number to deal with and you can change the decimals on this one number and it changes it for the whole table. The next step is going to be over here where we're gonna click on this arrow right here. Now, if you're on a Mac, it'll be an eyeball little I with it inside of all. So let's go ahead and click it. And we're going to go to the value field setting under the value field setting. We can choose how the value field is being displayed. So now we need to pick, do we want to show all the GPAs added up some, do we want to count how many GPAs we have? So if we had five people, it would tell us five GPAs. do we want to get the average GPA? Uh, that sounds a lot like pivot chart two. Do we want to get the maximum, which could be an outlier, could be on the high side outlier or the minimum. So we've got all these different options. How are we going to display this number? I am going to choose average. And now this is the average GPA for everybody inside of this survey right here. 
Now, additionally, for pivot chart two, I'm using the directions. It asks me to do a categorical variable on the rows and a categorical variable on the columns. So I can pick these variables right here. And let's see, we have things like somebody's handedness right here. So let's go with handedness right here, left versus right hand versus ambidextrous. And then let's go to one more categorical variable, whether or not they have a significant other. So here we are, left, right, ambidextrous, and whether or not people have a significant other. Now we have a pivot table. We have achieved the goal of making a pivot table, and we're one step away from making our pivot chart. Now there is the chance that you might need to filter out some values. Let's say someone put in a GPA that was like 9.0. Well, you can't have that. I could actually find that out by going here and putting GPA into the filter and then seeing all the values of GPA. I can select to keep all the items or I could de-check a box right here and remove that item from my pivot table. And it'll also be removed from my pivot chart. If you notice all of these GPAs make sense right here, they're all within the 0.0 to 4.0 range. So I don't need to filter anything, but it was a good check. Let's say you're doing something like parking tickets and someone says they got a thousand parking tickets. Well, that is one of those instances where you might remove out that outlier because it just seems like someone made it up. And only in rare instances, if we think the data is wrong, or someone transposed the digits, do we remove outliers. In most instances, we keep them or we give them a little bit of special analysis and mention them when we're doing our write-up. But you need good reasons to remove outliers. And at this point, I have nothing to remove here. I'm good. Let's make our pivot chart. To make our pivot chart, let's go here to Pivot Table Analyze, and we can click Pivot Chart. This will automatically bring up the options for the pivot charts. We're actually going to go ahead and use this basic pivot chart right here and start filling it out. Now, one thing you can do is switch the rows and the columns. Sometimes it can look better displayed the other way around. So let's give that a shot. And you know what? I kind of like this right here. I kind of like the ambidextrous left and right hand right there. So let's go ahead and start formatting this to get it to be exactly how we want it. One thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to bring this over to its own area. And I'm going to put it right here so I can be in the frame and it can also be in the frame too. So we're just going to get everything nice and situated right here. And there we go. Let me move back over here for now. So with this, we have our pivot chart made. Now we just need to fill it out. To fill out your pivot chart, you can go right here to the plus icon and you can start adding in features. You can add in the access titles you need by selecting the primary horizontal and the primary vertical. You can go to the chart title right here and add in your chart title. Sometimes you need to re-space it a little bit. And of course, we definitely need a data table. With this right here, we actually have everything we need, but now it's up to you to fill this stuff out. Remember to put prepared by and your name up here. Let's go ahead and go prepared by Brian Stevens, if I could spell my name, Brian Stevens. With this, I'm actually gonna put in a full title. Let's see, this is average high school GPA by, and it would be handedness and significant other. There we go. Average high school GPA by handedness and significant other. And down here on the bottom axis, we have handedness. And then here on this axis, we have its average high school GPA. So let's go ahead and select it all. Average, I'm going to abbreviate high school GPA right there. You can do a few more settings on this, but it looks like we're doing pretty good here and we have a great screenshot. Now this can be brought into Word and we can do a small write-up right here. So let's give this a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and screenshot this as we speak. So let's get our screenshot. So now that we have this graphic inside of Word, what can we say about it? There's a lot of things to say, but maybe we'll contrast the highest and the lowest group to start. You'll notice here that ambidextrous individuals who have significant others had the highest high school GPAs of 3.37. What's also interesting is ambidextrous people without significant others actually had the second highest high school GPA of 3.22. The lowest high school GPAs actually come from the left-handed individual group where the people without significant others had a GPA of 2.96 and the people with significant others had a GPA of 3.12, which is close to the people who are right-handed. 
the right-handed individuals had a GP of 3.15 if they did not have significant others. And on average, the right-handed people with significant others had a GPA of 3.16. It's important to mention that these are all average GPAs and maybe even the ambidextrous group might have limited data to fewer people being ambidextrous. If you look, there's a lot to say. Imagine your job is to write just three to five sentences, three to five strong sentences that use the data and use the groups. So try to use the numbers and the groups to write some good sentences and good interpretations for both of your pivot charts. Make sure to turn them both in and you'll do a great job on this assignment. Good luck. Mm -hmm.